And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all. My sisters and brothers, as we gather in the midst of our Christmas joy, we hear again the story of the Magi who came to honor the Christ child. We acknowledge that we also are on a journey, a journey that the heavenly Bethlehem where we hope to meet the Lord face to face. We are guarded, guided, not by the light of a star, but by the light of our faith. So let us ask the Lord to give us strength and to give us his mercy. Lord, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you revealed to us the love of our Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are the word made flesh, the radiance of God's glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together now, let us sing our joy of Christmas. And let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The last part of the book of Isaiah contains the words of a prophet who lived after the Jews had returned from exile. They found their temple destroyed, their city leveled, but with great faith the prophet envisions a wonderful future for Jerusalem. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. 
Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Ephesians were a community in which Jewish converts to Christianity lived side by side with Gentile converts. The author of this letter confirms that God's saving grace is available to everyone, whatever their background might be. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to, the, to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, 
Behold, Magi from the east arrived to Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And Jew, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. And after their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. And they were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is traditionally the time of beginnings, when resolutions are made, promises are made to stop this, to change all of that. It all feels good and it even sounds even better. But it's often so forgotten and downright neglected. But my friends, let us not forget or neglect this beautiful reality. That God's grandeur is with us and among us. And it can be found in the unlikeliest of places, a manger. As the Magi can tell us, everything depends upon where we look. Are we willing to look up to the light of God for guidance, rather than to the darkness of our own sentiments? We can look back at Christmas, just days ago, and ask if we saw what was really there. Did we really see what was there? We need to take stock, as the marketing folks will soon do, and tell us whether or not they think it's been a good Christmas. We too have to determine if it's been a good Christmas. Did we really celebrate? Did we really celebrate Christmas? Or did we just go through the motions? We need to see that when the song of the angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the magi are back home, the real work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to feed the hungry, to bring peace to our troubled world. We gather around this very table and share the gifts of our God, and renewed and restored in our faith. And it is from this table that we're sent to bring the good news of Christmas to those around us. And what a great way to begin a new year. What a great way to begin a new year than remembering that Mary listened, even when what she heard sounded to be impossible. Joseph trusted, even when that trust became difficult. The shepherds hoped even though their jobs offered them little reason to have any hope. And the Magi searched, even though that search took them to new and dangerous lands. These ancestors of our faith remind us that God is visible. The 
if our eyes are open. God speaks if we're willing to listen. God reveals a plan if we're humble enough to follow. God offers us hope if we have the courage to grasp. Epiphany is a celebration and a reminder that our journey, that our discovery of the Christ child is ever new. So may we keep seeking him and may we keep finding him. For like the Magi, may we be wise, may we continue to be surprised. And may we always pray that the light that guided these ancestors long ago may continue to guide us today. And together now, let us stand as we make our profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And having seen the light of Christ, we come to do him homage. So let us now pray to him with confidence. For the church, that we may faithfully follow where God leads us and be attentive to the deepest desires that God has placed in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. For the transformation of our society, that God will lead us to honest dialogue, greater respect for one another, and a deeper commitment to the truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to the pandemic, that God will heal the sick, comfort the grieving, strengthen the health care workers, and guide the vaccine distribution and administration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who help others grow, particularly parents, teachers, coaches, and mentors, that they will affirm and encourage us to fully recognize and utilize our gifts and opportunities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have our prayers. For a deeper appreciation of our humanity, that we may recognize God's gifts and invitations to our ordinary experiences of love, challenge, and opportunities to serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have prayers. For a year full of grace, that the new year may be rich in blessings, new friendships, and may the joy of Christmas help us to recognize God in nature, in our relationships, and in the events of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have prayers. For the spirit of healing, particularly for those inscribed in our Book of the Sick, that God will strengthen their minds and bodies and restore them to fullness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died this week, that God will welcome them into the eternal banquet to live in God's presence forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers we now offer, especially for all parishioners, including Richard and Josephine Arandia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Radiant and just God, 
hear and answer our prayers. And as you guided the Magi in their journey, guide us in the light of your ways and keep us always with your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we would normally take up our offertory. And so I remind you maybe to take the opportunity now or today to make that offertory. You can do it online, do it on the screen that you're looking on now. Scroll down and follow the link there. You can go to our parish website, our diocesan website, and make the donation online there. You can write the check, drop it in the mail, mail it to the uh, parish office, or you can even drop it off at the parish office as well. I thank you in advance for your generosity, and I remind you of how we're dependent upon that generosity as well. Thank you. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the glory of the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of Jesus' name, for our good and good and well of His Holy Church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your Church, and which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We lift it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for all the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from everything. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to remind you that we are having daily Mass in our parish courtyard, Monday through Friday, 8.30 in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning on Saturday. We have a vigil mass at four o'clock in the afternoon and a Sunday mass at nine o'clock and 10.30 in the morning. You do need to make reservations to attend those masses, simply go online or even look at the screen that you're looking at now and make your reservation there. We'd love to have you there and come and worship with us. We would appreciate that as well. I hope you have a great beginning of a new year. Hopefully this year will be full with new possibilities, new openings for us continue health and recovery from the pandemic. So let's pray one another, support one another, and encourage each other. So I remind you once again to wear your masks, keep six feet away from each other, wash your hands, and we will get through this together. So Happy New Year to all of you, and I hope you have a great day. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master today has come to its end. May we go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.